So um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Yu, and I'm the first paper, uh, first author of um, this paper. So this paper is um, done by the data mining group at URUC, and um, the code can be found out in uh, my GitHub repo. Um, so basically, this paper is on topic discovery via uh, latent space clustering of pre language model representations. Um, so first, I will give a brief overview of the motivation and introduction to the framework. Um, so we all know that automatically discovering coherent and meaningful topics from tax corpora is intuitively appealing, and it has a wide range of applications such as um, document analysis, summarization, information retrieval, and question answering. Um, so along this line of applications, topic models are the most prominent approaches. Um, but despite the, um, despite the effectiveness of topic models, they actually suffer from several uh, notable limitations, which we are aiming to address in this paper. So the first limitation is that on the generative assumption topic models is back of words, which completely ignores the boring information. And secondly, topic models cannot leverage external knowledge. Um, and thirdly, the generator um, process of topic models induces intractable posterior that are hard to be computed. So there must be some approximations of, uh, adapted. And later topic model variants, such as incorporating newer, uh, newer networks and, uh, or embeddings into topic models did not address all the above limitations. Um, so major motivation in this framework is to leverage the power of pre language models. And usually they employ the transformer architecture and they are pre-trained on large scale task corporate like Wikipedia. So um, they acquire the generic linguistic features and um, factual knowledge. Um, so given the strong representation power of the contextualized embeddings, it's natural to consider simply clustering them as an alternative to topic models because topics are essentially interpreted via clusters of like semantically coherent words. But interestingly, such an attempt has not been systematically studied. Um, so in this framework, we um, basically study the task of topic discovery by clustering in the latent space um, derived from pre language models. Uh, and we first analyze some um, challenges of doing this kind of practice empirically and th theoretically. And based on the identified challenges, we will propose a new framework named Top Class. Uh, and we will show that Top Class significantly outperforms strong topic discovery methods um, by deriving more coherent and di diverse topics and also offering better topic wise document representations. So, first, let's um, look into the challenges of uh, leveraging Pritchard language models to. Um, the topic discovery task. So when the first question we may want to ask is why not naively cluster the pre embeddings? Because a straightforward way of obtaining K topics is to simply apply, for example, K means like algorithms to the pre language model representations. So what could be the potential issues? So first, oh, we visualize the representation space of pre language models. So we take BERT as um, the backbone model here. We can see that the embedding spaces do not exhibit clearly separated clusters, which means that if we directly apply K-means like a clustering algorithms to these spaces, um, the clustering results will be of low quality and unstable. Um, so um, there are some like background reasons for the, the unsuitability of this representation space for clustering. We analyze it from the perspective of pre-training our target. Basically, is uh, Bird is trained with uh, mainly with mass language modeling objective, and we show in our paper that there are some connections with the cluster structures induced by this MLM objective, which. Um, essentially reveals that the number of clusters in this high dimensional space is enormous, which is not uh, suitable for applying like K-means algorithms. Uh, so the second challenge we want to mention here is that the um, pre language model embeddings are usually of high dimension, which is connected to the concept of curse, dim curse of dimensionality. Because distant functions can be meaningless in the high dimensional, uh, in high dimensional spaces. So this poses challenges for like Euclidean distance-based uh, clustering algorithms. Uh, and from another perspective, not all pre language model representation dimensions are useful for topic discovery because we want to um, basically keep the topic discovery process um, 
independent of some uh, features in the uh, representation of Christian language models. For example, we do not want to really like consider syntactic features like, um, for example, play, plays, and playing should not really represent different topics. So we want to only capture those topic indicative like features instead of being disturbed by all the features in the representation space. And the third challenge is that there is usually um, non-trivial, this is usually non-trivial to obtain good uh, document representations from pre language models, although they do have superior contextualized word level representations. For example, if we want to obtain some good uh, sentence representation, we need to fine tune the sentence representation of BERT on some downstream tasks for to derive like some sentence BERT. Or from another, another perspective, we want to keep in mind that those sentence embeddings learned trained are in a different space from the word embeddings because they're not jointly uh, fine-tuned. Um, but we in topic discovery, we must make sure that the document embeddings to be in the same space with the word embeddings uh, so that we can use them jointly for um, these kind of joint do uh, topic discovery. Um, so now, given the challenges we are um, basically motivated to propose a new model top class to address these previous challenges by um, for like applying pre language models in uh, topic discovery. So top class has two major components. The first component is an attention based document uh, embedding learning module, which is shown on this um, left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we have a latent space generative module, which derives a latent space for clustering. Um, so first, the attention-based document embedding learning is based on uh, the attention mechanism. It's very simple. So basically, the idea is to derive a document embedding as a weighted average of contextualized word embeddings. There are some parameters associated with this attention uh, mechanism, and these parameters will be jointly learned via the second module, which we will be introducing next. So this um, design basically allows the document embeddings to share the same space with the word embeddings so they can be jointly used for the topic discovery process. And our second module is the latent space module. So basically, um, our motivation is that um, the original embedding space by the Pertune language model is not suitable for clustering algorithms. So instead of operating in the original embedding space, we propose to project the um, embedding space into a latent space and then operate um, the clustering process in the latent space. So here our assumption is that the latent space is lower dimensional and spherical um, because such uh, assumptions brings a lot of benefits. The first benefit is that the spherical latent space employs angular similarity instead of Euclidean based metrics and is less um, prone to these kind of um, distance-based uh, distortion in high dimensional spaces. And it's also like um, better in capturing the vector similarity. Uh, and secondly, this lower dimensional space mitigates the curse of dimensionality. And secondly, by projecting the high dimensional feature to a low dimensional space, we are essentially preserving only those features that are useful for topic discovery and then um, some uh, redundant, um, like unuseful um, like information will be discarded. Um, so now how do we like learn this latent space and then perform clustering in that? There is a straightforward approach. We can first apply like dimensional dimensionality reduction technique like PCAs or like neural network uh, deep uh, like uh, deep learning based approaches. And after that, we will subsequently cluster in the latent space. But such a, an approach cannot guarantee that this um, reduced dimension embeddings will naturally fit for the clustering. So instead of like doing these two processes, like uh, subsequently we will um, do this um, process jointly. So we propose this uh, following generative model. So we first um, sample a topic from a uniform distribution over k topics, and then we assume the latent embedding is generated from um, this spherical distribution. And finally, we will use a learnable function to map the latent embedding back to the original embedding space. So basically, we have three objectives for training this generative model. The first objective is aims, uh, aims to preserve the original embedding space structure. And the second one aims to reconstruct the document semantics using the latent topics. And thirdly, we have a cluster, clustering loss that enforces uh, distinctive cluster structures in the latent space. 
Um, so the first objective basically is motivated by the general idea of generative model, which um, aims to faithfully generate the original data. So this is uh, accomplished by minimizing the um, basically the distance between uh, the reconstructed um, hidden states be, uh, uh, versus the original hidden states. And secondly, we also want to encourage the topic uh, semantics to uh, cover the document semantics. So basically, we align the reconstructed document embeddings um, by this um, topic weighted topic vectors um, to be closer to the uh, average of original word embeddings, which serves as the general semantics of the document. And also this, uh, we also want to promote distinctive clusters in this latent space, and we apply an EM algorithms for this. So basically, this is anal uh, analogous to K-means. We have an E step to estimate new cluster assignments and M step to adjust the uh, model parameters. So basically, in the E step, we will uh, der derive the uh, posterior based on the prior and the likelihood. And then we will adjust the new posterior um, by promoting some distinctive uh, topic structures and also um, balanced topic structures. And in the M step, we will use the newly derived like posterior to update the model parameters. So this is the overall, overall algorithm. We first um, use uh, a pre-training pre to uh, initialize our uh, like latent space mapping uh, deep learning modules, basically is instantiated as uh, auto encoder structures. And then we will initialize uh, our topic uh, clusters in the latent space. And then we will iteratively go through the E step and the M steps to uh, update the cluster assignments and then update, uh, update our model parameters. So our model is able to derive both the um, topic word distribution and the document topic distributions um, as the topic models can. So now we are ready to see some uh, empirical results. So we are validating the uh, effectiveness on two benchmark data sets and then adopting a set of commonly used metrics in topic models. Uh, so for n topic discovery, we evaluated um, topic coherence, diversity, and document clustering, and also show the qual uh, qualitative comparisons with previous uh, strong topic models. We can see that our newly proposed top class is able to derive a very coherent and also um, quite concrete like topics corresponding to like different semantics. And also uh, in this joint learning process, we are able to gradually improve the um, both the uh, topic coherence score, uh, topic diversity, and also um, these document uh, level representation for document clustering. And also from an intuitive like point of view, we are able to like identify the uh, benefits of applying this top class iterative training in the latent space. We can see that the latent st space structure is gradually exhibiting more uh, distinctive and organized structures. And finally, we are able to um, give a short summary of our um, work. Um, so basically, we start off uh, analyzing the challenges of, of using pre-trained language model representations for the uh, topic discovery task. And then we propose a new framework, Top Class, which jointly learns a lower dimensional spherical latent space, and then we perform clustering in it. We also propose an EM algorithm for training top class, uh, and our goal is to derive distinctive and balanced cluster structures. Uh, and we evaluate uh, empirically that our method is able to significantly outperform uh, strong topic discovery methods and also uh, providing coherent diverse topics. Um, and also we want to highlight the advantages of top, top class over traditional topic models. Uh, in this work, we use contextualized uh, language model representations uh, and also we bring the gen uh, general linguistic knowledge from the pre-training stage to the topic discovery uh, task. And thirdly, we do not actually uh, require any probabilistic approximations. So our framework is compute, uh, computationally and conceptually simpler than um, previous var variational inference uh, methods in topic models. Uh, there are a bunch of future work directions like integrating with new pre-trained language models or advanced clustering techniques, or we can extend this uh, flat topic discovery process to hierarchical ones, uh, probably by top-down clustering. And there are like other related tasks that might be benefiting from this topic dif discovery process. Um, yeah, this is the end of my presentation, and uh, I have skipped a lot of like technical details because that are um, probably more um, 
like comprehensively introduced in our paper. So if you are interested in those details, I'll just refer to our paper. And if you have any questions, please um, feel free to either ask here or um, send me send we uh, send us like messages by emails. Now, thank you. If you have any questions, we are able to um, address them in the QA session. Okay. Uh, nice. Uh, nice presentation and a nice piece of work. So let's see if we have questions. And uh, so uh, before we go to the questions from others, I have some from my side. So one is about um, from the model perspective, because from the architecture presented, you uh, model the word representations to convert it to document level. So what do you, have you tried to variate or change the architecture of the model to see if uh, the information loss will be uh, not have negative impact to the performance if you directly use the word level to the document level instead of use the word level to a sentence level then go to a document level instead. So uh, have you tried um, this comparison? So you're you're suggesting that we can like add an intermediate layer to represent the sentences yes. and then to the documents. Okay, I see. So I think this is a good like concern because in like topic discovery, usually uh, sometimes the documents can be like very long and mm -hmm. uh, even like um, basically exceeding the maximum uh, sequence length allowed by pre-trained language models, which are usually like five to uh, 500 tokens. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this is a very good concern and there are indeed some like a, a different approaches of addressing this. For example, there are like, um, like advanced like um, pre-trained language models that are especially designed for like long sequences. So I think those can be like directly borrowed here to like model the long sequences to avoid like an in intermediate layer. Um, but I think uh, the general idea of deriving hierarchical re representations of documents, like for example, we first like use attention to mechanism to derive some sentence embeddings and then use another layer of like uh, attention to finally arrive at the document embeddings is a very nice idea, but I think in this like framework, our focus is not actually on the like deriving the document embeddings. Yeah. Our focus is on the latent space clustering part. Yeah. So I think we are using a relatively like uh, simple like architecture here. But I think I definitely agree that um, this part is worth like exploring and maybe um, for better uh, document representations, this part can like um, provide like uh, like better reps and, uh, like better like kind of results for the second module. Yeah. Okay. So I I see there are two questions from the chat and uh, what, the first question from Miguel is is somehow related to what we are discussing. And uh, so would you want to extend it or we can uh, a bit and less and that. Right. I think I think the like the for for example, if we use like sentence for these kind of sentence uh, pre-trained sentence representations, those can be directly um, used as a drop-in replacement for the document representation learning module here, except that the only disadvantage is that the sentence bird models usually are not jointly trained with the word representations, which means that when the when you have the sentence bird model, uh, you cannot really reliable reliably use their word level representations because those word level representations are not really like jointly tuned with the uh, like CLS token or something. So here our uh, goal is to basically um, derive the sentence uh, representation, uh, sorry, document representations and word representations into those into a shared space. Um, but act actually, I I definitely agree using those could be like um, mm -hmm. good like okay. directions. Uh, I see the debugger's question is also related. So because we are running out of the QA time, so. Yeah, maybe I can, can answer it. type in the, in the like, text. Yeah, so thanks for your presentation and uh, let's go to the next.